Well, when you think about it, uh, the transportation sector contributes to 24% of global CO2 emissions. So while you know, mobility is a basic need, it's also pretty dirty and we really have to think about how we can decarbonize it. Now, we have a number of alternative fuels available to get the CO2 um, footprint down uh, across global transport. And the most important uh, fuel types are battery electricity, hydrogen and alternative e-fuels. And all of these have a different profile and a different use case. And most importantly, we have to recognize there is not one right and other wrong alternative fuels because they're complementary. Not battery electricity has the lowest um, uh, CO2 footprint when you look cradle to grave from the production of electric vehicles through the run phase up into uh, recycling when we always have to think about the whole circularity aspect. It's, it's also the most energy efficient uh, way of moving. But uh, hydrogen still has a future. I think uh, especially when you think about applications for heavy traffic, uh, public transport, long haul transportation, uh, there is definitely a future for all these fuel types. It's an interesting question because when we look um, at the way value chains have changed in, in mobility over the last years with these new topics, we see actually the border between these sectors are completely redefined because we, it's a sector convergent topic. So there is not really one sector anymore that leads the charge because all these sectors have to collaborate and build these new innovative technology based business models together joined up uh, to form new uh, organizations and firms to really then capitalize uh, on the business model that the, that the user wants. But maybe in a nutshell, the key sectors to collaborate is the automotive sector, the oil and gas empowered and utility sector, working together with infrastructure providers and the tech uh, companies to form uh, the, the organizations of the future to deliver mobility for the customers across the world. Well, governments and policymakers, they have the role to basically kickstart the electric engine across the world because in the beginning of the formation of electric mobility ecosystem, uh, the ecosystem is rather expensive and unattractive because you don't have infrastructure yet. So there is a way with policy and regulation to really drive the uptake of electric mobility that's very much driven uh, by subsidies but also by penalizing CO2 emissions and the use of petrol fuels. Uh, so governments have the real strong responsibility to set the right policies, incentivize investors to create ecosystems that are not just user-centric and attractive for us, for the people, but also attractive for the investors to really make it work.